Good evening and welcome to our second service, tracing Jesus' path from the place of condemnation to his death on Calvary. These are called the Stations of the Cross. And as we begin, let us centre ourselves with a prayer. May the Lord be my friend, who once on earth endured on the gallows tree, suffered here for the sins of all. He has redeemed us, he has given us life and a home in heaven. Hope was renewed with bliss and blessing for those who'd been through burning. The sun was successful in that expedition, mighty in victory, when with a mass a great crowd of souls came to God's kingdom. The almighty ruler to joy among the angels and all the saints who in heaven already lived in glory then the lord almighty god came home to his own land that was an extract from the eighth century poem the dream of the rude and as we follow the stations this evening we try to imagine jesus's journey on that agonizing route but a journey made on our behalf, a journey to bring us to the bliss of heaven. The sixth station of the cross. Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry his cross. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene the father of Alexander and Rufus. And Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As we contemplate Jesus on his way to Calvary, we have to remember the story told preciously in the Gospels of a man compelled to help Jesus carry the cross that was too heavy for him. Simon was a man coming in from the country. St Mark says he was the father of Alexander and Rufus. And so Simon and his sons must have been known to the earliest Christian community. Simon was given no option but to help Jesus. But in the chance encounter on the way to Calvary, Simon and his sons become disciples. Let us therefore give thanks for all the strangers who provide help and support on life's journey. Pray for the grace to see Christ in other people's need. Pray for perseverance in faithful discipleship Pray for the practice of kindness and righteous deeds, especially at this time of great confusion and darkness. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The seventh station of the cross. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Two extracts from the writing of the prophet Isaiah. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. 
and from St Paul in his letters to the Corinthians. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. There is no gospel account of this incident, but the tradition has arisen and is part of Christian meditation. The name Veronica means true image. It's easy to imagine someone moved by pity to reach out and wipe the face of Jesus as sweat and blood streamed down his face and stung his eyes. That moment of cleansing from the defilement of spittle that the Roman soldiers had spat on Jesus as they prepared him for his journey to Calvary is a gesture of immense tenderness and spontaneity. Legend has it that the cloth used by Veronica bore the imprint of Christ's face. God's glory is revealed in Christ's disfiguration and that glory is still revealed in very unexpected places in the poor, the weak, the suffering. It shines out wherever there is compassion and generosity. Let us pray for a greater understanding of the glory of God revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. Pray to see him revealed in the wounded and the unlovely. Remember all who minister to the suffering Pray for the gift of heartfelt compassion and the determination to act on it. Most of all, pray for the image of Christ to be imprinted in our hearts. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The eighth station of the cross. Jesus falls for the second time. Some verses from Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I am weary with my crying. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. I have become a stranger to my kindred an alien to my mother's children. It is zeal for your house that has consumed me. The insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. On Ash Wednesday, we hear these words spoken over us as we receive the ash on our foreheads. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Jesus enters into our frailty and vulnerability. His exhaustion and pain make him stumble into darkness and trouble. Jesus makes human frailty his own and takes on our lostness and our sin in order to share it, heal it, and free us from it. Let us pray for forgiveness for our many falls, for our failures. Pray for the grace to rise above failure and the determination to walk in hope. Pray for reconciliation with God and with one another and pray to be made an instrument of God's peace Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The ninth station of the cross, 
Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. From St Luke's Gospel. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never, that ne never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? And from the Book of Lamentations. Cry aloud to the Lord, O wall of daughter Zion, let tears stream down like a torrent day and night. Give yourself no rest, your eyes no respite. Arise, cry out in the night, at the beginning of the watches, pour out your heart like water before the presence of the Lord. Lift your hands to him for the lives of your children who faint for hunger at the head of every street. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The women of Jerusalem were moved to pity by Jesus' sufferings, but he pointed them deeper to their own sufferings and the plight of a world ripped apart by its rejection of God's love, lived and proclaimed in him. Conventional tears of sadness and regret are insufficient. Our hearts need a profound conversion and reorientation to God's will and purpose. Therefore tonight, let us pray with all Christian people for that profound conversion of heart. That we may not follow Jesus with simple sentimentality or simply with conventional habits of piety but with a sincerity and longing that comes from a place of truth and recognition. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The tenth station of the cross, Jesus falls for the third time. From St Matthew's Gospel. Then Jesus said to the disciples, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And from St Luke. In his anguish, Christ prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Very near Calvary, Jesus falls for the third time and struggles to get up only so that he can be led to his tortuous death. All of us face death. Christ has experienced this human journey towards our physical dying. It is his share in my brokenness which makes me whole, his wounds that heal me. So pray for the grace of a good, holy and courageous death, accepted from God's hand in God's time. Pray for compassion for the dying, for all who care for the dying and for all facing the last stages of their life's journey. Pray for the desperate and any tempted to suicide or self-harm. 
Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. <laughs>